Hello everyone and welcome back. Thanks for joining me. I'm Jeff with Alternate Route. So if you followed a couple of my previous videos, we talked about the easy steps to becoming a military pilot. And uh, before we go any further, I want to let you know um, to please pick up my book. Uh, it's called Alternate Route. You can pick it up on Amazon in paperback form or on ebook. Uh, also, there's links in the description below as well as on my website, youralternateroute.com. Uh, it's going to have a lot more information in depth about how to go about doing the process of becoming a military pilot and getting one of those coveted slots in the Air Force Guard and Reserve. So today I want to talk about the UPT pipeline, kind of what's going on, how it's been affected by the pandemic, and what the Air Force is doing to address its pilot shortage. And yes, there is a pilot shortage, and I'll explain in a little bit. But first we're going to start off with the UPT pipeline in general has been backed up because of the COVID pandemic. As with all things you can imagine, they've uh, paused training a couple of times to ensure the safety of the students and staff, um, change a couple of processes to make sure that everybody's safe so that they can continue training. Uh, and the effect that's had is a decrease in the output of pilots in the pipeline. So for example, uh, the Air Force uh, active duty was expected to graduate anywhere from about 1,300 to 1,400 pilots this year. Um, they're going to be about 200 short. They're expecting to graduate only about 1,200. And on the Air Force Reserve side, in a typical year, they need to graduate 200 to maintain the current force. However, they're expecting to only graduate about 80 to 90 pilots this year. So uh, what does that mean for you guys? It's basically the opportunity is there. They're backed up in the pipeline right now, so you might be contacting units and they'll be telling you that, hey, we're full, our manning document's full, we're not doing any hiring at this time, which is true. However, give it about six months, maybe a year um, at the most. I believe by the summer, things will start to pick up. Um, the economy is already doing well, but the airlines will start to bring back some of their recalled pilots, and um, those, those opportunities to get a UPT slot will open up. So speaking of the airlines, it's my belief that once the vaccine uh, it gets rolled out to everybody. People are itching to go out to travel, to, to get out this summer and um, get out of their homes. So what does that mean for us is the pilots who have chosen to stay in the military or chosen to come back looking for full-time status, um, those I believe are mostly majors and above. And although the Air Force sees the Manning document is full because all of those full-time positions are filled at this point in time, that's not going to be the case as soon as the airlines start hiring again. The people who have airline jobs will go back to them and the people who are looking for airline jobs will um, start submitting their applications. So the Air Force is a little bit top heavy at the moment. We have a lot of majors and lieutenant colonels who came back to fill the slots that were being left behind by airline pilots. However, like I mentioned before, the decrease in the number of graduates in the pipeline for UPT is creating this gap and therefore there is an actual pilot shortage. Whether the Air Force believes it or not, it still exists. So what is the Air Force doing to address this pilot shortage? They're aware that there's a gap between the number of pilots that they need to maintain a current force and the pilots that are currently graduating. And there's a couple of new innovative programs that they've started to implement at a couple of UPT bases uh, to help expedite the pilot training process to help produce a better overall quality pilot and also at a faster rate and a, at a cheaper cost. Uh, so two programs I'm going to talk about today are UPT 2.5 and the Civil Path to Wings program. UPT 2.5 is an extension of the UPT Next program which was supposed to be a proving ground that the use of virtual reality, artificial intelligence, and a um, modified syllabus can produce a, a better pilot in a faster time at a cheaper cost. Uh, so that was done for about a year uh, at 2019, 2020 timeframe. Um, the lessons learned out of the UPT Next program became UPT 2.5. Now UPT 2.5 is the combination of uh, virtual reality simulators replacing some flight time, so you have a decreased flight time in the aircraft. You have increased amount of simulator time. It's also a self-paced program which allows students to accelerate 
through them uh, through the program themselves. They don't have to wait for the rest of their class to graduate the contact phase before they move on to the instrument phase, for example. They move at their own pace. Um, so the syllabus is adjusted to the student, as well as using, like I said, artificial intelligence in that virtual reality world to help uh, really cement those lessons um, in the flying portion of the syllabus. So that's only available at Randolph Air Force Base right now and at Vance Air Force Base. They're looking to um, expand it to further UPT bases in the next year, um, but that, that's an exciting new program to help students uh, expedite through the uh, UPT syllabus and, and graduate early. Now another program I want to talk about is the Civil Path to Wings program. And that is where they're using experience from people in the civilian world who already have a commercial license, uh, maybe they're already a regional pilot or a CFI, they have flying time, they have experience, and the Air Force wants to utilize that, give them credit for that experience, and accelerate them as well through the UPT pipeline. So because this program is new to the Air Force and they're looking to implement it in about June 2021, so they've already started it uh, the application process for the first class to start in summer of 21. Um, I'm going to read off a couple of the requirements for the Civil Path to Wings program to kind of give you an idea of what they're looking for, uh, how you can qualify, and then also what it means to uh, accelerate through the program. There's a couple different um, scenarios, and so I'm just going to go through those right now. Uh, so forgive me for reading this, but uh, the Civil Path to Wings program is only for pilots who will fly mobility aircraft, special operation forces, or combat control and intelligence, surveillance and recon. So it's not for fighter or bomber aircraft, it's only for crew aircraft and those um, services. So the basic eligibility requirements are 250 hours of fixed wing time, a commercial certificate with an instrument rating, a current second class medical, three letters of recommendation, a sponsorship from an Air Force Reserve flying unit, and a current PIXM score. So uh, I guess I failed to mention this is an Air Force Reserve program only, and so you need to contact uh, Air Force Reserve unit, let them know that you're interested in the Civil Path to Wings program. They have to then basically hire you and sponsor you, and then you will move on in the process of becoming uh, part of the Civil Path to Wings program. Now, the uh, PIXM score, like we talked about in some of my other videos, is the um, AFOQT, the TBAS, and any flying time that you have. That, those three components uh, give you a PIXM score, so you need to have gone through each of those phases prior to uh, submitting your application. Okay, so if you're interested in that program, you have to fill out a Civil Path to Wings candidate data sheet. Um, that's available. I'll give you the website uh, at the bottom. Uh, in the details of this video. Um, but once you've submitted your application, the Air Force Reserve is going to complete a competency evaluation to determine uh, where you are in your experience level and where they should insert you in the UPT pipeline. So again, I'm gonna read this. Um, the competency uh, validation is a robust assessment of general flying knowledge and instrument knowledge. Applicants should be prepared for a 75 question closed book test, a 100 question tabletop question and answer session, and emergency procedures uh, walkthrough, as well as a 1.5 hour simulator assessment. Uh, the written exam is uh, the FAR AIM focus with heavy emphasis on IFR and national airspace information. So based on how well you do on that, the Air Force Reserve will give you a score of qualified, well qualified or extremely well qualified. And that means if you are qualified, you'll be scheduled for your flying class one physical at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, uh, and you will attend the UPT 2.5 program, uh, like I had mentioned earlier. The well qualified, you will be scheduled for your flying class one physical, and you will uh, bypass the T6 phase of UPT and be, um, proceed directly to the T1. So you will skip basically six months of uh, the UPT syllabus, go straight into T1s, which again is about six months long, and then graduate with your wings. 
And for those who are extremely well qualified, you'll be scheduled for your flying class one physical. And upon graduation, you'll be scheduled for what they're calling an Air Force Fundamental course, which is gonna be two weeks of training in the T1. And then when you complete that, you'll be sent to your formal training unit. So for example, if you go to the C-17, uh, you will go to, let's call it Vance Air Force Base, you'll fly the T-1 for two weeks, and then you'll go to the C-17 program at Altus Air Force Base, and you'll just uh, be inserted into that program uh, immediately. So um, pretty groundbreaking stuff. Uh, it's very forward thinking, and uh, kudos to the Air Force for you know, thinking about the civilian world and uh, using the expertise and knowledge that those people have to uh, help uh, expedite the, uh, the UPT pipeline and get the uh, experience in the Air Force that we need. So there you have it. It's an excellent opportunity for those of you who, again, maybe you're not just out of college and maybe you're 25, 30, CFI, CFII, MEI, you've got all your ratings, you've always wanted to uh, serve in the Air Force, but haven't really had the opportunity, didn't want to go through the entire process. Um, this is another avenue for you to serve in the military. And uh, I highly recommend that you uh, get some more information about it. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a link down below, but um, one thing you can do is uh, just go to Google, search AFRC UFT guidebook, and uh, it should be the first search result there. Go ahead and click on that, download it, save it as a PDF to your desktop. And then uh, associated with that document is gonna be a whole bunch of attachments that will help you through your process. Uh, but specifically chapter five of the UFT guidebook is about that Civil Path to Wings program with a couple of uh, links and more information about what you need. All right, so there you have it. Uh, these are just additional ways for you to serve. They're still doing the traditional UPT pipeline for everybody, 52 weeks long. You do the T6 phase, you do the T38 or the T1, and you track uh, to your specific aircraft. However, in addition to that, they're trying to look at new innovative ways to get more candidates into the pipeline and get through them through faster. So um, there's still ROTC, OTS, Guard, Reserve, um, typical uh, pipelines, um, but I'm just trying to inform you guys about some, some new uh, programs that the Air Force is trying to implement. So uh, if this helped you out, I really uh, would appreciate uh, subscribe, comments, uh, ask me questions. Uh, you go to my website, youralternateroute.com. You can uh, email me directly with any questions that you have. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you guys. I know everybody's situation is different and uh, I wanna help you reach your goals of uh, becoming an officer and a pilot in the Air Force. So thanks and uh, we'll see you next time.